first and foremost, I just wanted to apologize for the lackluster background in all of the clips that I'm filming today. I'm sure you'll be able to tell which videos I filmed when, but I just didn't feel like sitting on the floor today. So I'm in my little reading chair. That's like my bedroom lamp behind me. So sorry it's boring, but it's just for today, I didn't feel like sitting on the floor. But I'm here with an exciting video for me. Currently, as of right now, it is the 9th of June. So I have been filming a ton of like reading challenges and I just kind of wanted to read a book that I feel like reading because currently I'm filming my Throne of Glass series video which that one will definitely not be up before this one I guarantee that but I'm reading the whole Throne of Glass series which is a series I want to read but it's taking up a ton of my time and then I'm filming two like challenge videos like reading this for a month or something like that so a lot of the books that I'm reading are for videos and I am enjoying reading them I do want to read them but like I just they're not necessarily what I want to read in terms of like what my mood is. So I really just wanted to make like a more old-fashioned reading vlog, I guess. I don't know if it's technically old-fashioned since I've only been on YouTube for two months at this point, but I just wanted to do something closer to my Twisted Love reading vlog or my Fine Print reading vlog. So I decided to pick up The Serpent and the Wings of Night. This is the hardcover in case you've never seen it. I have the I take jet I take dust jackets off when I read so that's why it's naked right now <laughs> so this video will probably be encompassing both books I have been in the mood to read them for like the past week everyone says they're so good and I'm just so curious like I'm tired of missing out so I decided to pick it up I actually started it yesterday as you can tell I'm so far into it I am on page 18 page 18 yes also one sec it's like gorgeous it's truly so pretty I have read the prologue in chapter one and my thoughts so far are nothing <laughs> no thoughts head empty basically everyone raved about it so much that i'm almost a little disappointed because it's like my expectations were through the roof and that's not the book's fault at all so you know i just gotta get through that thing of like of course it's not gonna enthrall me in the first 20 pages like we need an introduction like be for real <laughs> but i am excited this is also my first ever Carissa Broadbent book and I do know not only this series but the Daughter of the New World series I think I think that's what it's called but I do know that one is super duper popular as well so if I like this one I might pick that one up in general I am just very excited to be reading this also very nervous because again I've heard so many good things that I'm just worried I won't like it but if I don't then I don't it's whatever. I think this is a duology. I thought it'd be more, but I've been hearing people say it's a duology. I have yet to research that. Actually, I will research that right now. So give me one sec. So I found an answer. Sorry about the wait, even though that was a millisecond for you. <laughs> it says here, and I'm just going to read verbatim what Google says, but it says the primary lead characters will shift with each of these duets. The main plot spans all six books and core characters will continue to be really important through the series. So book one and two is about one character and then book three and four is about one character and then four, five and six will be about one character. So I guess picking it up now is actually good because the first duology is complete. And then if I like it, I guess I'll just pick up the second duology and then the third one. But okay, got it got it so technically duology but there's six books hope that helps you it helped me <laughs> i'm very excited stop looking down but i'm very excited for this book i am very excited to try this author i really really hope i like her i've heard only good things i've literally only heard people liking it or loving it so let's hope this goes well. I am very nervous to be reading two incredibly thick books along with the last four books of the Throne of Glass series. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. 
my plate's been very full this year. Like this year is the year I just decided to pick up the thickest fantasy books I can find, all of which are a part of like a 15 book series. So it's so weird because it kind of feels like I'm wasting time because I'm just reading one story even though I'm not, but it, it's a whole thing. I went from being a 300 page rom-com girly to being thick book series fantasy girly and I used to not even want to read series because it felt like it takes up too much it was like a whole thing for me so I'm like struggling with that a little bit but I'm excited we will see how this goes let's hope for the best wish me luck this book it's gonna I'll flip it so you can read it but it has a little author's note with trigger warnings which I love because there are so many books that I had to DNF because I didn't know how to find trigger warnings when I was on Goodreads when I switched to Storygraph that's like no longer an issue at all because trigger warnings are like right there but I didn't know how to find trigger warnings so I had to DNF so many books because there were like triggers that I didn't want to read about and I love that she just like straight up tells you like this has one two three four and five so just consider that I love that we love content warnings they're not spoilers let's just make that very clear one thing that i have heard about this book is that the insults in it are really creative and fun which i'm so excited for but i found one that i already love and i'm mostly reading this on my kindle because i do have kindle unlimited until august and the hardcover is really heavy like it's like priory of the orange tree kind of heavy it's very very heavy for no reason whatsoever and it's just like it hurts my wrists a little bit because I'm sensitive but yeah so I'm just reading it on my kindle for like comfort sake so I have it highlighted in there not in here but the insult that I thought was absolutely hilarious was don't skewer yourself with that stick up your ass like I love the creativity I'm one of those people where I love jokes that are very like quick and creative and using words that you wouldn't necessarily use in like every day language so and this feels like it has those kinds of insults and jokes so i'm very excited for it and yeah i think i think this is gonna be good i'm pushing it out into the universe that this is gonna be a good experience and i'm gonna love it but i'll be back in a couple of chapters when i have more to say and i'm really excited to just be filming like a normal reading vlog again because i haven't done this in a while so i'll see you when i see you page 120 of the serpent and the wings of night and i'm obsessed i'm actually obsessed i don't have words to describe how much i'm enjoying this but i am this is one of those books where i am trying to read it every chance i get as i mentioned before i luckily do still have kindle unlimited for two more months so I'm literally reading it on my phone when I'm waiting in line somewhere or if we're doing something and I don't need to have my attention immediately there. I'm just reading. It's insane. The last time I felt this way about a book was either when I was reading Akatar back in January or technically the second half of era fire because i could not put that one down either so i'm reading this and queen of shadows together and that one i can't put down either it's actually insane so i've had to like make a schedule for myself so today i'm reading this tomorrow i'm reading queen of shadows and then the next day after that i'm reading this again i am having such a good reading time right now with this and with queen of shadows like it is actually insane i really get the hype that being said i did hear a lot that people say oh my god it's just like akatar it's not i'm 25 percent of the way through and there are absolutely no similarities not in the plot not in the characters not in the fantasy so i don't like that people are saying it's like akatar it gives you the same kind of feelings i want to say like if you enjoyed akatar and you like kind of felt addicted to it this is i feel the same about this book so there is that but it's not like akatar at all in terms of the actual story if you've read the back you know that there's that she's a part of like this contest and the contest has 
five sections and she's just completed the first one. I didn't know what to expect because I also heard people say this is like Hunger Games but with vampires. I have never read or watched the Hunger Games so it meant nothing to me but I also because it's so popular but also so old I kind of knew a little bit about Hunger Games but also not really so I didn't know what to expect with this I didn't know what the competitions were going to be or how they would be but the first one was weirdly interesting like it was weird but also interesting I enjoyed it but it was not at all what I expected overall I'm really enjoying this. I'm pretty sure I've met the love interest already. And if it is who I think it is, I really like him. I don't see how it wouldn't be him, but <laughs> who knows with these books. I'm very excited. I'm very certain that I'm going to start book two as soon as I finish. But I'll see you when I see you. about halfway. It doesn't look like it with the book, but I am halfway, I promise. And I'm eating this up so much. I was actually gifted the sequel of this yesterday and I'm very happy because I can just jump straight into the sequel, not have to worry. Unfortunately, I was gifted the paperback and this was gifted to me as a hardcover. So they don't match, which sucks, but you know what? I'm not gonna complain because they're gifts and I will find a way to make it work on my shelves. How? I don't know, but I will find a way. So we will see. And ironically enough, the paperback is also just ridiculously heavy. Like I, this was heavy. This is a heavy book and the paperback is also heavy. Like the paperback feels like what I thought the hardcover would feel like if that says anything. But that's not why you're watching this. Also like side tension, I had no idea that this was a self-published book. I didn't see anything anywhere about it being self-published, but there's like no publisher. I realize there's like no publisher marks anywhere in the little copyright page. You see, there's no publisher information. It's just the copyright and like who edited and cover designed and everything. So that's that was fun to learn. But yes, I am about halfway. I've really been enjoying it. You know, a lot of people said it's kind of like the Hunger Games and I, for the first time, watched the Hunger Games two nights ago? Sunday night, today's Tuesday. So yes, two nights ago. And I don't really see it. <laughs> I don't know, like yeah, they're both competitions to the death, but I, they're, that's the only way that they're similar, it's competitions to the death, but maybe I'm just being picky. The movie was good though, just side note, but I'm enjoying the competitions, especially because we have no idea what they are until um, it happens. So it's kind of fun like wondering, cause you're like, well, how are you gonna partner together? Like, how is that gonna be a thing? And what's the half moon trial? And what's this and what's that? And it's very fun. It's very quick pace which I'm enjoying because especially since I'm reading this next to with the Throne of Glass series it's nice to have like just a very quick paced fantasy because I love SJM but her books can be slow and Carissa does not write slowly it seems like this is my first book by her so by no means can I make an accurate assessment but I'm really enjoying it. I'm really liking the character Rain and then Aurea. This is a bit of a spoiler, so please skip ahead if you don't want to hear it. But about Mish, I was very shocked when they didn't kill her off. Like any character who's been named and isn't immediately associated with being bad has not been killed off yet. Like I think Ibrahim's still alive, Mish is still alive. That's interesting to me. I really, really did thought with the Nightfire part that she was going to be killed off. I can't help but wonder if she might still be though. I hope not because I really like her as a character and I would love to learn more about her, but still I'm very surprised at the lack of death. Yeah, overall, I'm just really liking it. It does have quite a few sensitive topics, which normally I would avoid reading about just because it's not fun for me, obviously. <laughs> But I feel like Carissa, at least so far, has handled them very well. 
I've never heard anyone really complain about the content warnings or anything like that. So overall, I'm enjoying it. I definitely want to continue on with this series. I, like I said, I have the sequel, I'm jumping straight into it. And so she came out with this other book called Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. I saw it in Barnes and Nobles. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I really want to pick that one up at some point this year, very possibly. And I don't know, it's one of those books where it's like I'm not really analyzing the actual story too much, I'm just going with the flow of things. But it has been interesting. I don't trust Vincent at all. I know we should, but I don't. And I do know in the like the blurb it says something about her like ruining an empire or something. So I don't know, I just feel like he's up to something bad. I feel like maybe the Rishan are not actually like as bad vampires as the whatever her dad's kind is called, I forget. Let me check. There is a glossary, so thank God for that, I guess. Hage. 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 I have a feeling the Rishan are gonna be not evil and I feel like the Hage might be and we're gonna learn about that. That's just my prediction though. I don't know if I'm going to be right in that or not. But yeah, I'm just, I'm very excited. I have that much left and I like actually genuinely cannot wait for this and the Ashes of the Star Curse King to be over because I'm enjoying it so much and I'm one of those people where it's like, if I'm enjoying something, it cannot be over quick enough because I want to know how it ends, if that makes sense. Like, I don't try and like slow it down. I'm like, I need to speed it up. But yeah, that is how I'm feeling. Yeah, this is a very good read. This is going to be a high racing. I don't know if it's gonna be a five, but it is going to be a high racing. So I'm very excited and I'm having a great time. I'm back with just a quick little update because I made myself really angry the other day. Basically what happened was I was gifted a paperback copy of book two, The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. And I'm sure many people do this, but once I get a new book, like at least once a day, I go to my shelf, dig it out, flip through it, feel it, touch it. I just like having new things. So I did that and I just flipped through the pages and then I just happened to stop on one page and like look at the art and stuff and then my eyes were drawn to this sentence that was all caps, all italicized, like bam 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 and basically that sentence was a character saying blank 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 and that blank 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 is the end of what happens in The Serpent in the Wings of Night so I spoiled the ending for myself so obviously I'm very annoyed because I've been trying so hard to avoid spoilers if I watched reading vlogs on it I made sure that it would be non-spoiler and I'm just very irritated over the fact that I spoiled it for myself after trying so hard not to and like guessing through half of the book and every like I'm just very irritated. So for that reason I have decided I'm just gonna finish book one. I already know what happens, I don't wanna let it drag on, I'm gonna finish book one, get over it, start book two and just finish the duology. I'm gonna get through it and I want to be done with it at the end of July, latest. So that is where I'm at. It, it sucks, but it is what it is, unfortunately. So yeah, if you're planning on reading this, don't flip through the second book or just don't flip through series. Don't be stupid like me. You're welcome. <laughs> It is maybe five hours since the previous clip and I finished. I finished The Serpent and the Wings of Night maybe 10 minutes ago. I literally just went and made lunch because I was starving, ate lunch, and then set this back up so I can talk to you. So I don't even know my star racing. I will think about it as I'm talking about it. So this bad boy, 
The first and most important question that I wanted to have answered when I picked this up is, is it worth the hype? Why was everyone freaking out about this? And yes, yes, it is worth the hype. And it was a really, really good story. I don't know if I touched on this earlier. A lot of people said this is like Hunger Games, which I don't fully agree with, but I do see essence of it and i do feel like if you are looking for hunger game hunger games but with vampires this is probably the closest you are going to get to it i also heard that this is basically akatar but with vampires it's not i've heard a lot of people say it is i've heard a lot of people say i was told that it's not i don't think it is i do see this having the same potential of investment as the Akatar series has, and characters do have similar personalities. I don't think Aurea resembled Feyre that much. I think Aurea is more so like the the Archeron sisters mushed together, like I see a little bit of each one of them, but I think she's more like Nesta. If I had to pick someone, I'd pick Nesta to be the most similar to Aurea. So yeah, I don't think it's similar to Akatar at all, but it did give me the same feelings where I'm like invested, I can't stop reading, I just want everything to work out for everyone. Even though I know it's not going to because when does everyone ever get a happy ending in these books? They get a somewhat happy ending. Someone always dies. Now, the big thing, the reason why I decided to finish this today, the fact that the ending was spoiled for me. I am lucky because I knew the what, I didn't knew, know the how. So the actual trip of guessing to the end, I was not prepared for. Emotionally, physically, mentally, was not ready. It was not what I thought at all. Obviously, I'm not gonna spoil it for you or anything. The thing that happens at the end of this is um, a betrayal, I guess you could say, without really spoiling it. And at first, I didn't really care like when it was happening, but then like I started to care, like it hit me a little bit later, I did shed a few tears. That is why I look like I do. <laughs> I am a little sad about how it ended. Not disappointed, but ideally what I wanted to happen didn't happen, but what I wanted to happen would have been happy ending and the sequel wouldn't have been needed really. So yeah, but overall really, really good book. Definitely worth the hype. I am very probably just going to start the sequel today, honestly. Not get like too too into it, but maybe read the first chapter or two or three. It was very worth it. It was very good. I get the hype. I definitely do recommend this. I haven't really read any vampire stories since my Wattpad days, so that was really, really fun too. You know, I know vampires had their moment with the whole Twilight thing and then kind of die down a little bit, and it might be coming back a little bit, at least with her, and I definitely did enjoy that. One thing, it is a little spicy. I knew it was spicy because I heard other people talk about it and I believe the content warning also says that it's spicy. It wasn't, at least in this first book, there were not that many scenes. I believe there were only two spicy scenes, which not that bad. And one was like a chapter-ish and the other one was maybe half a chapter. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't icky to read about like I didn't feel the need to skip it I just read through it so that wasn't too bad and that's coming from someone who doesn't really like spice so bonus points for that I guess in terms of star ratings I'm, I still kind of have to sit on it a little bit so the official rating will be in my June monthly wrap-up video because by then I'll definitely have decided but I'm thinking maybe four. It doesn't feel like a four star but anything less than that doesn't feel right either so I'm gonna take the rest of the day and just kind of think about it maybe start the sequel see how I feel after that and yeah um if I forget to add it here the final racing will definitely be in my June wrap-up which should be posted before this honestly so if you haven't watched that and you want to know go 
check it out. But yeah, I'm so happy that I have this. I'm so happy that I have this sequel. It was a really great read. This is one of the first books in a long time that I felt kind of addicted to. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really enjoying this. This is really fun and I would recommend. I'm going to go now and start book two. I have bad news. <laughs> I am 26% into The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, which is about 157 pages into the book, and I'm considering DNFing it. I haven't DNFed it yet. I'm trying really hard to get through it, even though I'm basically just skimming the book at this point, but I really don't want to DNF it because I've come so far and it's so thick and I have this vlog, you know, it's just... And I really wanted to like her books too, so it's hard for me to even consider DNFing it. But in general, I'm just not having a good time. It is so incredibly boring. I want to like rip my hair out when I'm reading it. Nothing is happening. There's been one Basil scene so far and that was lackluster at best. And basically, so far it's just been not even conflict resolution just the main characters being stuck because the one is mad at the other for something and let me just say the reason the one character is angry is very 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 reasonable like i'm not saying it's like a really bad miscommunication to no there was a giant betrayal and i completely understand why the character is mad but the main character is going through it so she's just kind of depressed right now and then she's not really even talking to the other main character so there's no there's no comedic relief there's nothing happening like I said, there's been one basil and we're nearly 200 pages into the book. Like, it's just very boring so far. It's starting to pick back up a little bit where I am. Like, she's starting to feel herself again, but it's still been very boring and I haven't enjoyed it. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Like I said, I'm just trying to like skim through it. I'm trying to maybe like skim 50-ish pages a day because I also have like three other books I'm trying to read by the 7th of August. While I still have Kindle Unlimited, in, in case you don't know, today is the 7th July. So it's stressful and not really fun and I'm, I'm really bored. I really don't know if it gets better, but this is pushing such a sour taste in my mouth. I don't even want to continue the series, let alone continue book two, but I'm trying to be strong. It also really sucks because I don't think an audiobook has even been created yet. I think it's currently being made, so I can't even like borrow it from the library or you know something like that so it's read it or don't for me and usually if i'm reading a book and i struggle through it but i want to finish it i opt for an audiobook because again 2 to 2.5 speed and just like put it on the background of everything you can fly through it and it won't be a worry so that is where i am it's very unfortunate like i said i don't know what i'm going to do yet but that is where i'm at I just, I don't like it right now. And that's really all that I have to say. I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm considering DNFing it, but I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try very, very hard, but yeah, it's, I'm struggling badly. So wish me luck, I guess, if I decide to continue this. <laughs> So first and foremost, please excuse the way I look I wasn't intending on filming today, but I have officially DNF'd The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. I just, I couldn't read it. I, my eyes literally glazed over every time I tried and I even went as far as to open it on my tablet and use the little accessibility tool to have just the iPad read it to me because there's no audiobook available for it. So. I even listened to a hundred pages of the little robot reading it to me and I still just, I was not interested, I didn't care, I didn't want to know and listen, I gave this book its fair shot. I heard some people say the first third of the book is a bit slow 
I gave it 256 out of 600 pages, which is approximately 40%. It's 42%, I just checked. So I gave it its fair chance. It didn't interest me. I didn't like it. I was trying so, so hard to finish it and I couldn't. It was so incredibly dull. That being said, I am incredibly disappointed about this. I was so looking forward to finishing it and reading it and reading the rest of the series and I really did want to like it. That's why I tried so hard and I was going to force myself to finish it, but I just, I have other books I want to read. It's a 600 page book. I, I tried so, so hard to like it and I couldn't and I'm not going to do this to myself where I force myself to finish it just to finish it. Like I said, it's very disappointing and sad because I truly did love the first one, but this one just was not it for me. Nothing happens. It was so incredibly dull. Maybe, possibly, when the audiobooks are made, if they're uploaded to my library, I will give it a chance again and actually finish it and listen to it. But until that day comes, if that day comes, I am just not going to think about it again. I cannot explain to you the immense relief that I feel about having DNF this. It was stressing me out so, so much. And I kept looking at it. So the fact that the book is back on my bookshelf, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to touch it. I don't have to think about it. So incredibly relieved. I am so happy to not have to worry about it anymore. But that being said, really, really loved the first one. It was just book two that I didn't like. But for now, those are my thoughts. I definitely do still recommend this series and trying to pick it up. For me, I don't dislike political fantasies necessarily because like the cruel prince i really really love but in that series a lot was happening you know same with akatar a court of wings and ruin is one of my favorite books of the series and that is very political and war driven but there's actually things happening and in this one there's nothing happening she's just sitting in her room crying and again a very reasonable reaction to what happened at the end of the Serpent in the Wings of Night, but it's not fun to read about. Like, again, 256 pages in, there were like two-ish vassal scenes. One to two interesting, like, political things happening. And then she made like a self-discovery about herself that I'm not going to say because that's like a major spoiler if you haven't read the series, but that's all that's happened in 256 pages. And I cannot emphasize enough how that is not enough. And the book is 600 pages, you know? It's not just like, oh, there's 100 pages left, I can push through. No, it's 600 pages. I hadn't reached halfway. It is actually ridiculous. Still do recommend it, but just go into it knowing that book one, very fast paced, lots of stuff happening, very intriguing and inter interesting. Book two, slow, nothing happens, not really great. So very unfortunate i'm very sad about it but it is what it is i would like to know if you've read the series though and what you thought about it if you did did you like book two am i the outlier i know it's ranked very highly so i feel like i am but if you like me or my videos i would really appreciate a like comment and subscribe if you feel like it I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye.